Hi, I'm Sherry Cook Woosley, and I have the privilege of moderating Tell Me What to Read Next. And I'm surrounded by many experts. So the idea is that the audience is going to use the Q&A feature and you can tell what story you like or what the last book that you've read. And based on that, our panelists are gonna be able to recommend you something. Um, so I'm an author. My debut novel was Walking Through Fire and I have um, short stories out in three anthologies this year. Um, Thrilling Adventure Yarns 2021, Once Upon a Dystopia, which is Fractured Fairy Tales, and um, New, New Year's, Black Eyed Peas uh, on New Year's Day, which is a, an anthology of hope fiction. Um, and what I'm currently reading right now is Middle Game. So now I'm going to turn it over to JT, um, who will introduce himself and his works and, and let us know what's going on. Hi, thanks, Sherry. I'm JT Greathouse. I'm a fantasy author uh, with short fiction out in a bunch of places, mostly Beneath Ceaseless Skies magazine. Um, my debut novel, The Hand of the Sun King, which I have an arc of right here, is coming out in August from Galantz. That's what it will look like when it comes out. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, and other than that, I was a bookseller for a few years and now I teach high school English. So I have quite a bit of experience recommending stuff to people as far as what they should read. Okay. And Mary? Hi, I'm Mary Soon Lee. Um, I write fiction and poetry. My two latest books are from opposite ends of the poetry spectrum. I have Elemental Haiku, which is haiku for the elements of the periodic table. And I have, um, only as an ebook, an Asian flavored epic fantasy told in poetry. Um, and I think you were also asking about what we're reading. So oh, okay. these are the things I'm currently reading. This one I'll be done with in a day or two. And actually the Jemison fairly soon and so on. But some of them, particularly the poetry books, I try and read, you know, a few poems a day from them. So they could take a while <laughs> to get through. That's fantastic. And Dave? Hi, I'm Dave Ring. Um, I'm a writer and I'm also the publisher and managing editor over at Neon Hemlock Press. Um, and I have a novella coming out next year from uh, Queer Space and imprint of Rebel Satori Press um, called The Hidden Ones, which is like a Irish urban fantasy, but a little bit more of a rural fantasy, to be honest. Nice. But, oh, and I'm reading Zen show Blackwater Sister, um, which is incredible so far. I, okay. I forgot the what I'm reading bit. I'm, I just finished reading two books, The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez, which is a really good debut novel this year. And then uh, The Dragon Waiting by uh, John Ford, which was just re-released from Tor for the first time in like 10 years or something. Very nice. Okay, so we're gonna just start our conversation and let's talk about short fiction. What, what short fiction would you recommend? And um, Dave, I'll start with you. Um, there's a lot of really cool um, online mags in particular that, that I'm drawn to of late. Um, Fire Magazine is one that I go to a lot. Um, and then uh, Mermaids Monthly is a newer one that I'm really excited about the work that they've been putting out. Um, uh, and so one of the authors that I published last year, Lee Harlan, also put out a collection um, through TKO Press, which is prim primarily comics, but Blood Like Garnets. Um, so if you're interested in sort of gnarly horror, um, weird stuff, I uh, highly recommend this book. JT, do you have any short fiction suggestions? Sure. Um, Jet, like my thing that I always suggest to my uh, students who are interested in short science fiction and fantasy is the Escape Pod and uh, Podcastle podcasts, which are great because they not only publish original fiction, but they also really frequently reprint highlights from all over the place. And so you can get a good sense of uh, a lot of good stuff going on in the genre by just paying attention to those as well. And also um, Pseudopod, which is the horror one. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I think 
it's just a great idea to follow magazines like Dave was saying. Um, I'll throw out a few more. So again, Beneath Ceaseless Skies, which is really good if you like sort of literary fantasy. Uh, Strange Horizons is really good and also free to read online. Clark's World is free to read online and really good. Nightmare if you like horror. Um, and I also like a lot of the stuff that tour.com occasionally puts out. They don't publish sort of a regular issue, but they occasionally will publish a short story on their website. And those are usually really, really solid. Uh, G Gemma Anderson, um, GV Anderson, who's a writer who hasn't had a novel out yet, but I think when she does, it's gonna blow up because her short stories on tour.com are always just stellar. Thank you, those are excellent suggestions. Mary, do you have any short fiction suggestions? Well, echoing the online free magazines, um, the ones suggested are all great. Another couple of good ones are Uncanny and Fireside. Um, and if you, I found in general that the short fiction nominated for the Nebula Award each year is usually very good. And much of it ends up online, even if it comes from a place that isn't um, typically free because it's been nominated, you can typically find those stories. And then there are years best anthologies, which will be at libraries and so on. Um, but <laughs> for a particular specific recommendation, I loved um, Molly Gloss's collection, Unforeseen, which I think was published last year. And it contains short fiction from 1984 all the way up to 2019. Maybe it was published in 2019 then, because it had a few original pieces in it. Um, I thought it was actually one of the best collections I've ever read, though I read one story at a time because overall they were somewhat bleak and I didn't want to read a whole bunch of somewhat bleak though excellent fiction. I just thought of another one. Um, I think it was called Dominion. Uh, there was an anthology that came out last year of shorts. I think it was short fiction as well as novellas. Um, and I'm blanking on who published it, but I know the editors were um, Ah, Donald Pecky, I can't, can't remember exactly. And Zelda um, over at Aurelius Leo. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was very solid, like really good anthology. And I think it's been nominated for a few things and uh, a couple of the stories in it have been nominated as well. And it's, it's, inter it's an interesting anthology because it's all black authors from Africa. So it's a slightly different like perspective on the genre than you usually get. Yeah, I recently read a not particular, it's actually a rather old, like 20 years old anthology edited, I think, by Sherry Rennie Thomas, which is Dark Matter, which is another collection of speculative fiction by um, Black authors. And it was, it was also very good, recommended. Very nice. Again, I want to invite anyone in the audience, if they want a personal recommendation, go ahead and use the Q&A and then I can use that to to quiz our, our excellent panelists. Um, let's talk about standalone novels. What can our panelists recommend for a standalone novel? And Mary, I'm gonna come back to you to start. Well, um, I recently read, I don't know even now how she wants to pronounce the title, but Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. And I, I really liked it. That's a novel that was up for awards um, in this award cycle. Um, like the Nebula Award, maybe others. Um, it's it's a, her second novel, but it's quite a long time since her first novel. So it felt like a debut novel because it had been 20 years or something since her last one. Um, and it's, it's beautifully told and it's not standard. Um, and I, I don't want to spoil it because it, it does, it's easy to spoil. So I'm just going to say that I liked it a lot. Um, and then, a Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gavriel Kay. That's two years old now. Um, he's an author I like a lot, but I think it may be my favorite of all his novels so far. It has a slightly more melancholy tone, I think, than most of his fiction. Um, part of it is narrated in first person, which is unusual for him, um, by a person who is older looking back on the time when they were young. And I think it gives it that slightly melancholy feeling, but it's very poetic and beautiful. And then something which is very light to be a contrast, um, Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher from a couple of years ago, which is um, 
you know, a very entertaining, enjoyable read. And one of the main characters is uh, essentially a person who's been uh, put into a sword. So he's like the spirit of the sword now. That's pretty cool. If you're looking for something very light. I, I mean, there are more, but I think I should hand over to Dave and JT. Yeah, thank you. All right. So Dave, do you mind uh, giving some recommendations? I really need to read those T. Kingfisher books. They've been recommended to me over and over again. And it just hasn't happened yet, but they're 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 really high on my list. Um, standalone. I just read Amatka by Karen Tidbeck. Um, and if y'all are interested in sort of literary speculative fiction, um, I highly recommend it. It came out in 2017, I think. Um, standalone, like really engaging and with like a um, I don't know, it feels like the kind of book that that uh, the, the kids should read in schools, that it just tackles different, um, I don't know, it's like it opens up in this colony and it seems like it's this world, but then it quickly becomes clear that it's not because objects need to be reminded of what they are or else they'll dissolve. Um, and there's little things like that um, that sort of blend the, the mundane with the fantastic. And it's very weird, very surreal and highly recommended. Thank you. And JT? Um, I would echo what Mary said about Guy Gabriel Kay. Um, his, he just writes a ton of really, really good standalone fantasy novels. Um, they're kind of interconnected, but in a way that's not immediately obvious. And it's not a series where you have to read them all for it to make sense. And another author who does something like that is China Mieville. Um, where like Perdido Street Station is an extremely good standalone fantasy novel. Um, it's a little weird, a little on the literary side, but it's really solid. Uh, the Vanished Birds, which I just finished reading, is a standalone science fiction sort of found family novel. Um, and it was really, really good. Like, I'm surprised it's not on more awards lists as a debut. It's on the Locus, but I was having just finished it. I was expecting to have seen it on like the Nebula list, at least, if not the Hugo. Um, I also think horror is a really good place to look for good standalones because they don't tend to end up as series. Uh, and Stephen Graham Jones, the only good Indians from last year was spectacular. Um, and like, honestly left me more uh, like uneasy than anything I had read in the horror genre in a, probably a decade. Um, just a really well done book. Thank you. So I haven't read The Vanished Birds, but when I went on Twitter before this panel and asked for recommendations, that was one of the books that was recommended online. Now, it looks like we have two questions. So the first one is from Megan. Thank you all. I'm running out of things to read. My anxiety is through the roof, so I can't handle anything horror or too gory right now. I love books with a healthy dose of humor, but I also don't seem to do well with collections of short stories. Happy with science fiction or fantasy, preference for things I can get from the library. It reads I've enjoyed The Golem and the Ginny by Helene Wecker, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, Becky Chambers, The Inheritance Trilogy, M.K. Jemison, and The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. Okay, um, so JT, I'm gonna toss it back to you. Sure. Um, I, having seen all of that, my first question would be how much Terry Pratchett have you read? Um, because it sounds to me like you would probably enjoy some Terry Pratchett. Uh, it's, you know, humorous, lighthearted. Sometimes there's, there's, ten, oh, there's obviously tension because they're stories. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes some peril and danger and stuff like that. But there's always like a, a, a lot of humor cut through the whole story. Um, and he's written, you know, 30 plus books and they're very accessible in the libraries and things like that. Um, another one, if, if, you know, Pratt, if you've already read all the Pratchett or if Pratchett's not quite your speed, um, you might enjoy Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames, which came out a couple of years ago, I think, which uh, is another sort of humorous fantasy novel, but it's a less humor, a little bit more adventure, but the premise of it is really, really funny, which is, Basically, it's a fantasy world where adventuring parties have the same sort of cultural cachet that 
uh, rock bands have in our world. So they're famous and well-known and stuff like that. And it's a story about a, a bunch of washed up adventurers who kind of have to get the band back together and go on one last adventure. Um, and it's, it's an adventure story with, you know, it's, it's got violence in it because it's a fantasy story, but it's not too, too, you know, grim, dark or anything. Um, a little bit lighthearted, really great characters, a lot of humorous interactions. Cause these are guys in like their fifties trying to go on an adventure and they have, they complain about their knees hurting and stuff like that. It's, it's good. Um, so yeah, those would be the ones I would suggest based on what you've said. Thank you. Mary, what would you suggest for Megan? Um, well, actually, I think the Sword Heart is pretty much the top of my recently read list for that, but I, um, there are some more. So Sharon Lee and Steve Miller, who are continuing to write the Leaden universe, sort of space opera science fiction, a lot of the novels work pretty well alone, but the characters sort of recur in other roles in later novels. And on the whole, they are very um, sort of positive in that the characters help each other and so on. And there are good people. There are villains. Actually, I think they're relatively weak at doing their villains. They must be too nice. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, um, but in terms of reading things where there are there is a lot of sweetness contained in it, um, I recommend those. Um, and Martha Wells has, you know, right now she's known for Murderbot, which I think is darker than you're looking for. But before that, she wrote quite a lot of uh, books. There are seven, um, two of which are short fiction collections about the Raxura, and they are fantasy books. And I think they're softer than um, than the Murderbot books and might appeal. Um, they. And then there's a book that I found really soft that I read during the pandemic and it was very gentle. I, I really, really enjoyed reading it. Um, and it is called Mind Touch by MCA Hogarth. And the only thing I would say is that there are some follow-on books and the direct follow-ons are similar, but a bit darker. And then there are some other books in the same universe that are very, very, very dark. And I did not like the ones I read of those. So for this particular feeling anxious thing, I would recommend Mind Touch, but maybe don't take a random book by her because it might be a complete disaster. Mind Touch is extremely gentle. There's you, there's, um, there are aliens of the main characters, but they bake cookies and it's just very sweet. Um, so. Thank you. And Dave, do you have any recommendations? So I just want to go back to Murderbot. So I, maybe maybe at this point, like Murderbot doesn't need people screaming its name from the rooftops, but um, the Murderbot novellas are so funny. So, mm -hmm. and they are, they do have like a, a sort of murdery premise. Oh, they can't, they can't deny that. Um, but and they but they're about like a, a robot with anxiety and like a little <laughs> bit of depression and it's so relatable especially during this year they like the novellas single-handedly got me out of like a reading slump this year um i read a novella a night basically um one, right before the um the new novel came out and um and then i read and I, I'm getting the links a little bit confused. There's like five novellas now, maybe in one novel, but they're they're delightful and like laugh out loud. Um, so if you can't handle a little bit of gore there, um, the the humor bits are are, are really worth it. Similar, um, Yoona Lee's books are not light, but they're also if you can kind of sort of get through some of the really dense world building at the beginning of Nine Fox Gambit, the um, the the humor in those, especially related to the friendships that the main character ends up forging with all these little robots everywhere, um, and the soap operas that they watch together, um, like really punches through the story. And like, it's one of those, like you're reading quietly at night and then you cackle because you can't stop yourself. Um, so that's the sort of lightness that I end up gravitating towards, which maybe is still kind of dark and maybe not as good, but. <laughs> Okay, and we have another question. I really enjoyed the Hollows series by Kim Harrison. 
sort of urban fantasy with supernatural beings just being part of society. Also those Laurel K. Hamilton's Anita Blake series. So this is a little bit in my wheelhouse. So I'm gonna jump in and I'm just gonna throw out um, the Kate Daniels series by Alona Andrews. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Mary for some recommendations. I don't think I um, read a lot of urban fantasy with them just being part of society that I that I particularly comes to mind, but urban fantasy where they're not just part of society. I really enjoyed the Rivers of London series by Ben Aronovich. Um, and um, they're most people, it's a bit like Muggles and Harry Potter. Most people don't realize that there are supernatural beings or magicians, or not that there are very many magicians, but there are basically a few. Um, and they're narrated by a British um, detective uh, who starts off just before he finishes his training. Um, and there's a lot of humor in those as well. I mean, there is definitely darkness. I wouldn't recommend them necessarily for Megan, but Louis Louis might like them. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of a much older book. I, I think it's by Nina Kariki Hoffman, but I'm not sure that's actually the right author. And if I, if I remember it while JT or Dave are answering, I will um, speak up. But uh, that's, that's what I have at the moment. <laughs> Dave, do you have any urban fantasy that might... I do, I'm like running through a list trying to remember the one I want to recommend right now. So skip me for a second if it's okay. JT? Um, I am racking my brain for this one. I This is unfortunately the one genre I just don't read a ton of. Uh, and most of the ones I have read, it's been, you know, the sort of secret fae kind of thing. So I'm unfortunately not super competent to answer this question. <laughs> I thought of another, again, though, they're not um, out in the open, but KG, KJ Charles has a series of novellas, um, which <laughs> there's a strong romance component in them as well. And it's um, gay romance, if that matters. And I've, um, those are, those have been quite entertaining and they're set in the past. I'm not sure it's, it's probably an alternate past, but it's like a, alternate 19th century London or something or 18th century. I'm not actually quite sure how far back it is. Um, they were pretty good. Still looking for the other book. I, can't. I can hop in with two, um, two different ones. So one, um, it's two books so far in the series. It's, um, it's, a no, it's also um, has a gay protagonist. It's called The Tarot Sequence by KD Edwards. Oh, it's first brilliant. one is um, The Last Son, I think. Hanged, hanged Man. Yeah, and the Hanged Man is the second one. So they're pretty interesting. They have this, like the major arcana from tarot cards. Each one of those is um, personified by a main character and people are in different courts. Um, it's quite cool. And the, even though there's a little bit of, like the main character is, um, is a gay man, but the main relationship is a friendship with his bodyguard. Um, so that's pretty cool. There's two books there. And then as a standalone, this is going back a little bit, but um, Robin McKinley's Sunshine is like really cool in this genre as like a, it's a little cozy. Um, it's it, it's post-apocalyptic, maybe even Canada, like believe it or not. But, and I think it's the main character is like a baker and um, or works in a cafe and she bakes things. And um there's like a there's a vampire that oh wow that is not the cover I've seen that's that's wild uh it's really really satisfying and 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 um a little cozier than the books that you recommended but very much so in conversation with them and as someone who's read more Laurel K Hamilton than I'm proud of I know what I'm talking about so I I did just think of one that it's not urban fantasy in the sense of it's our world with magic in it but it is urban fantasy in the sense that it's like a modern type society and that's the craft sequence by max gladstone um and it's in, it's it's it might be interesting to you because it is about a world where like magic is run by corporations with lawyers who it's basically a like a legal procedural almost but with magic and it's very different and interesting and if you're looking for something where magic has been sort of folded into a society that resembles ours 
uh, where the structures of society are similar to the structures of our society, that might be one that is interesting to you. I just want to say that I really love the K.D. Edwards books. I, I found those a delight um, to read. I, I'm not exactly sure whether they're, yeah, they're in another one, but they're great. They're great. Okay, thank you for these recommendations. We have another, um, another puzzle for you all to solve. Tamara Pierce is my favorite YA fantasy author. What other authors should I try? So um, let's start with JT. Um, Kristen Britton is really good. If you, I don't know if Kristen Britton is considered YA, but the Green Rider series has some YA type stuff going on, I guess. Young protagonist kind of situation. Um, and it's, it's really good fantasy that has a similar um, flavor or like tech. I don't know. It, it feels to me like tomorrow Pierce, if that makes sense. Um, I think you might also enjoy Diana Wynne Jones. She has a book fire and hemlock, which I've, I have not read, but one of my coworkers at the bookstore has talked to me about and suggested it as, as a, a very good, uh, recommendation for people who are looking for books by tomorrow Pierce. So, um, that might be one to check out. Mary? I'm, this, this is terrible. I've never read anything by Tamora Pierce, so this may be off as a result, but my favorite marketed as YA fantasy series, well, I suppose actually it might be Earthsea, but setting that aside, because that's incredibly well known, and I don't think it's anything like Tamora Pierce, not that I've read Tamora Pierce, um, is Megan Whalen Turner's The Thief series, which I love, and I think is as I say, it's aimed at a younger audience, but I, I'm not sure it should be, um, because at least by book two, it gets pretty dark um, in places, and it's beautifully told, and I, um, I, I think it's, it's great. <laughs> and it have, does one thing that a few fantasy books do that I like, which is that it has real gods, and then they play a very small but really potent part in the books. When they appear, it's extremely striking, even though it's very occasional. So my two favorite, I'm not primarily a YA reader anymore. With that said, um, Tamora Pierce, um, I also adore her. I've, I've read that um, Alana, the first adventure, probably like more than 20 times, like as a young person. Um, the two books that I loved the most last year were YA books. Um, one is Scape Gracers by Hannah Abigail Clark. Um, it's a modern witch story with like, like really cool language. Um, not secondary world fantasy like most um, Tamora Pierce books. Um, and the other one was Legendborn um, by Tracy Dion, which is also a magic in this world book. So they might not be quite what you want. Um, but they're both incredible and you can kind of devour them and then sort of decide what you think. Um, I have Scape Gracers here, um, Legendborn, I've, I'm, I've convinced my mother-in-law to read, so she has that one. But uh, uh, maybe more like the themes, like the secondary world part and like the, the politics of that, of the Tortal or Tortal. Um, an Accident of Stars by Foz Meadows might scratch that itch for you. It's um, nominally an adult book, but it's it's a portal fantasy about maybe a 17, eight year old, 18 year old young woman from Australia, I wanna say, who ends up in another world um, that's a fantasy world that explores a lot of like cool gender and magic and politics stuff, like a lot of the Tamora Pierce stuff does. Um, and it's part of a duology and the second one is the second one is called like a uh, like a something of queens like a terrible of queens something like that and the first one is an, an accident of stars thank you and we have um, a question from michael cohen it says i've been searching for science fiction fantasy okay too with empathy humanism and some optimism not pollyannaism but a sense of hope doesn't have to be light or funny, but with a lot of heart and relatable emotion. 
Some of the recommendations the panelists have already made sound great, and I am putting them on my list. I'm thinking along the lines of Connie Willis, early Kay Kenyon, maybe Robert Sawyer, if you can learn how to write a satisfying ending. <laughs> um, Mary, would you like to begin? Well, um, I can't remember. I think it may have been in one of the questions that we received, but somebody mentioned Becky Chambers. Um, and I think that, that it's SF. And I think it's um, got a lot of empathy and a lot of heart. Um, the, she has three novels. The fourth just came out actually, but I haven't read, well, came out recently enough, but I haven't read it. Um, the first one is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. They're set in the same universe. They are connected, but they're not strongly connected. They're pretty much standalone when you read them. Um, um, what? Uh, sense of hope, optimism. Well, the Leaden universe has a lot of um, positiveness in it that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I think Martha Wells Rexura books, again, to repeat them, are um, positive mostly, and maybe going back a long way, um, like the channel books by CJ Cherry. Actually, there is darkness, but the, there are main characters who um, get along with each other. <laughs> <laughs> which is a nice thing and makes you feel good about the universe. Um, I should let someone else speak. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> All right, JT, do you want to step in? I want to hear what Mary was about to say before she swallowed her words. <laughs> I don't want to go on too long, but T. Frohawk um, has written some lost, they're called the Lost Nephilim books, the first book is actually three novellas and then there are novels um, that form a trilogy and they're set in our past not super far past the 20th century and they um, have demons and angels um, but they have the very nicest queer family there are two husbands and um, a, a child and it's uh, so there's um the backdrop is, you know, actually very grim, but the character, the main character interactions are very nice. And there's some platonic ones too, between um, them and other main characters. So if you want, are okay with your empathy mixed in with some darkness, you know, which the empathetic characters are battling against, then those are good. So I have three. Um, the first two are both, uh, actually quite dark but as kind of what mary was just saying they're stories about a situation that where there is hope in darkness right so the first one is the vanished birds by simon jimenez which everybody should read um and it's a it's another situation where the world the story takes place in is extremely bleak and it's 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 basically like a a uh, hyper-capitalist space-faring future where everything is sort of controlled by these huge corporations that, that as huge corporations tend to do, dehumanize everything, reduce it down to its, its sort of profitable components. Um, and it's not a great world to be living in, but the main characters are able to kind of find, uh, you know, there's for various reasons, there's tension between them, but it, it, there's a lot of scenes of characters like resolving conflict, interpersonal conflict. And the overall kind of theme of the book is how even in horrible circumstances, people can make connection. Um, and so there's that kind of glimmer of hope in the darkness. Uh, and the second one is The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin, which is an, a, a, a very similar kind of thing where um, the basic setup of the book is there's these two planets that sort of orbit each other. And um, one is a desert, more or less. It's like a, a pretty desolate place. And the other is basically Earth. Um, and it's a story about a, a pe a, people who leave the one Earth-like planet to start a very optimistic sort of anarchist commune on the desolate planet. And it's a, it's a story about cooperation, but it's also a story about how, like, it's very difficult to do that kind of thing when there are external pressures on you that are trying to kind of force you to function within a, a system that wants to take from you. And I don't want to say much more than that because I don't want to spoil the book, but it's, it's another example of like, if you're feeling kind of 
worn down by the world and you want to read something that gives you a vision of what the future could be like, it's a great one to read. And then the third one is um, The Just City by Joe Walton, which is uh, a very, very humanistic book in the sense that it's literally a, a story of people trying to uh, create Plato's Republic using people from throughout history, uh, basically the goddess Athena uh, and the god Apollo kind of get into a bet about whether or not Plato's Republic would work. And then they create it to see if it would work. Um, and so it's got a lot of, you know, exploration of different philosophical themes, what it means to be human, what it means to, to try to create justice um, and how justice operates. It's not 100% optimistic. It has a lot of things to say about uh, how that can kind of go awry, but it's also a really great book to read if you're interested in thinking about how, you know, things can be organized in ways that are better than they are currently organized. So all three of my books kind of have that sort of angle on them, but that's what gives me hope is trying to think about, you know, how could we solve problems? And I think science fiction is a really great thing to read for that. What was the name of the Joe Walton book? The Just City. The Just City. Okay, yeah. Thank you. All right, Dave. Um, just if you like Connie Willis, Joe Walton totally is a nice match for a lot of Connie Willis stuff. Um, which it's funny though, because one of them is from Wales, but then sets some things in America. And then the other one is from America and sets a lot of books in England. So it's, there's something happening there maybe. Um, but um, what was I gonna say? Oh, Arky Martin, um, uh, A Memory Called Empire, I think would probably scratch your sci humanistic sci-fi itch um it's it, it's it's so good i don't know how to it is so good so <laughs> it is yeah and it's a beautiful book too um i have the sequel on my nightstand and it's a duology i think so the second one will will wrap it up i haven't gotten into it because i want to give it the right space um i am probably going to recommend this if we get to the a question about um under hyped series as well but if you can get past the heartache of book one, um, the the Amberlo series by Laura Elena Donnelly um, is really, really good. It's secondary world alt history, for lack of a better phrase. Like it's fantasy, but there's no magic, right? Um, and it's sort of based in like a alternate vision of, um, I never know how to say these words out loud. The the is it Weimar in Berlin? Like back when Berlin was was popping. So the first book ends like pretty bleakly, not gonna lie. Um, but overall it is a, a very humanist story about redemption and choices. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite series in recent years. I, I thought of one more that might be, um, that's recent and might work, which is um, C.L. Polk's Witchmark, which is the first in a trilogy, but I think it's the most um, empathetic, sweet one of them. Um, it's a another one, like JT, where there's a kind of dark or very dark backdrop, but there's a, a really likable main character and then they meet other characters and they the interaction is very, is very, agreeable <laughs> and also just to say the dispossessed is one of my favorite books ever so um, so dave i feel like my library is like based on your recommendations <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad there's some um, connections happening here so we've kind of opened the the can of series so maybe we should go ahead and continue that while we wait for our next question so jt do you want to start with your idea of series um, I'm, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of series out there and I, the difficulty I run into is like, I feel like a lot of them have already kind of made their mark, but, um, some of my favorites that I recommend to people when they're looking for a new series, you know, if you're looking for something kind of huge and epic and a little bit dark, the Malazan book of the fallen by Steven Erickson is one of the most 
richly detailed fantasy worlds I've ever read. And it's a 10 book series that's finished. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the author not finishing it. Um, the Farseer series or trilogy, which then becomes, I think there's like four more trilogies by Robin Hobb um, is a really, really good one too. Um, I mostly read fantasy series, but the, if you're looking for a science fiction series, um, if you haven't read The Culture by Ian M. Banks, that's sort of the er example of really excellent space opera um, that's finished also. And it's not really like a series with the same characters, but it has some thematic arcs and things through it that are really good. Uh, yeah, I could go on. There's a lot of re really good series out there. I tend to just stick to things that are done, though, because <laughs> I always feel bad recommending a series to somebody and then it not ending. Thank you. Um, Dave, did you have any other series? Yeah, sorry, my, I keep getting that message where it's like your internet connection is unstable, sorry. I take it very personally. <laughs> like, that's not the only thing that's unstable, Zoom. Um, uh, so Neon Yang's Tensorit novellas are really cool. It also, there's another question coming about queer fantasy. So this would also scratch that itch. They're four novella length, they're nominally standalone, but really like the first two are kind of, you can read them in whatever order you want. And then the third and the fourth, you should read after that. Um, and they're set in like, a, um, I never say this word right, but like wuxia, like inspired, um, uh, it's one of those books that got called sulk punk um, mm -hmm. when, they, when that term was, people were trying to make that into a term. Uh, they're really cool. They're all driven by different characters. The third one's an epistolary novel, if you like those. Um, definitely underappreciated. And I think there's an omnibus version coming out soon if you don't want to pick up the four novellas. Mary, do you want to talk about series? And then it uh, looks like we have another question after that. Oh, okay. So there are lots of series that I've read and loved. And many of them are really well known. Um, so for instance, this book <laughs> is number 20 in a currently 21 book series by CJ Cherry, which she began in 1994 and I think is still writing. Um, and I just galloped through these books. I don't actually, you know, I, I can pretty much say <laughs> they're not for everyone. It's clear looking at the reviews, some people hate them because there's a whole lot of introspection and not that much action. You see the character's thoughts in great detail. Um, he is a human immersed in an alien civilization. Um, I love the main character. I loved the books, though I actually might not have got into the first book unless I had been told that it was good because it has like a an introductory section, which just mark just seems like the first section of the book. And then it has another section, which is set several decades later, which feels like, a, you know, which is also not the main book. And then it begins again, more time later. And that's when it really begins with the main character who runs through the rest of the books. But it's a really probably well-known series, like most of the ones I like. The one that I love that seems to be less well-known is Enemy Outlaw Ally by Kay Eason. Um, and it's a fantasy trilogy with really, wonderful characters um and she has written since more recently um a book that's higher profile oh with a cool title about something how rory thorn destroyed the multiverse or something but um if you go back to this trilogy i think it's top-notch entertainment okay so we've got three questions that we got to make sure we get through so krista says Always looking for fantasy books that feature LGBTQ characters. Any suggestions? JT, can you start us off? Sure. Um, uh, the Vanished Birds <laughs> by Simon New Minutes. Uh, that book's just too much on my mind. I can't, I literally can't think about anything else right now. Um, that one was really good. Kings of the Wild has uh, LGBT characters in it as well. Um, I'm trying to think of, of like, we've already mentioned the Tensorit books. Uh, I, I feel like this is just increasingly a, a situation where if you pick up newer works of fantasy, there's a good chance that there will be characters who are 
you know, gay. It's just becoming more normal, which is great. And it's so, which is making it hard for me to think about like what specifically would I recommend? Um, but I, I think I'll pass it because we don't have a lot of time. Dave, do you have some recommendations? Oh yeah! Oh, I should have I'm broken, but it looks like uh, Chris has already read this one. So that's, um, I only because it's right next to my pile. If you do want, I edited this anthology of queer post-apocalyptic fiction that you might be interested in. Um, and Scape Gracers that I mentioned before, so good. It's like pop rocks in your mouth. Um, and then maybe, so shorter stuff. Oops, where's the camera? A Rune of Shadows, L.D. Lewis, and then The Factory, which is of Lowell by C.S. Malarick, both have cool little queer stories at their heart. And then also A Memory Called Empire that we mentioned before, although that's sci-fi. It has a couple neat bits to it that might scratch the fantasy itch too because of just how the science works in it. But Mary, do you have some suggestions? Um, yeah, lots of things that have already come up. Um, which are really good queer fantasy. Um, and two older ones, um, there's an, the Night Runner series by Lynn Flewelling, um, which is another book with characters that are very likable. Um, the romance, the, the, the characters are queer, I guess, from early on, but the romance hits either at the end of book one or into book two and then continues, but it isn't so much in that first book. Um, and then, Swords Point by Ellen Kushner, which is a beautifully told fantasy with, um, I, I think she said more or less every character in it is queer, though they're not all good, they're not all likable, but there is a likable queer couple at the center of it. Um, that one's at, like my top five of all time, Swords yeah. Point, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, um, yep, yeah. and then things we said before. Elizabeth says, I loved Maria Brennan's Lady Trent memoirs, The Natural History of Dragons. What can you recommend for someone left wanting more at the end of that series? She just put out a book co-written with someone else under the name M.L. Carrick, maybe? A. Carrick, I think. And it's called the, the Mask of Mirrors, I think. I just read it, it's very good. I haven't read these other books, so take that with what it's what it's worth, but it's a big door stopper. Um, so you might like that one. Yeah, I haven't read the Mary Brennan, so I'm not quite sure, <laughs> other than the word dragon, <laughs> what we're looking for. There's a lot of dragon out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're looking for like the sort of Victorian-esque dragon books, uh, the, there's the Temeraire series um, by, no, oh my god no, no. no me know it that's right which has a similar kind of like texture to it in terms of the setting different story but if you like dragons in victorian england okay and last question somewhat related to underhyped series what i was going to ask is if there were any recommendations for someone who really enjoyed the web serial worm which i would say is criminally underhyped I mean, didn't Wild Bo write another thing? I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm pretty sure he, he has another like super long web serial. Um, but other than that, Worm is very unique. Uh, sort of grim, dark superhero stuff. And I'm trying, I, I don't know. Try, um, try The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. Um, it sort of subverts um, superhero stuff. It's it's about it's also an amnesia book, which is like a subgenre that I'm obsessed with. But so it's a character who wakes up. She doesn't remember her own memories. She has a note from herself from beforehand, and it's like you know, it's like look out, they want to kill you. And um, uh, but it it subverts superhero stuff. You like it? The Rook, Daniel O'Malley. It just says wrap up. <laughs> yeah. So we're. If we can just go around quickly and just say, where can people find you? Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is that, that people can find you after on your social media. So JT, can you start us off? Sure. I'm, I'm mostly on Twitter at Jeremy TEG. Um, everything I do ends up posted there. So that's how to follow me. <laughs> Perfect. May, how can people find you on social media or 
on Twitter as at Mary Soon Lee, and I have a website, www.marysoonlee.com. Okay. And Thank you. Um, I'm at, the website is dave-ring.com, and then on Twitter and all the other things, it's at Slickhop. And then Neon Hemlock is at Neon Hemlock. Thank you all for such a great panel, and thank you to our audience for asking us such a great questions. <laughs>